there is construction work going on outside, so if you hear some thumping, know that that's, that's on our end. You know, if the LNER is so overrated, the then why did their locals make There's a reason the JWR is called great. The LMS made them locals which survived the longest under- Shut up! We get it. You happen to like X Big 4 Railway the most. Can we please stop comparing them to one another and finally start treating them as railways in their own right? Aye, if there's one thing more certain than the sun rising every morning, it's that the big four railway companies each have die-hard fans which will defend their railway until said sun fails to show up one morning. What's even more assured is that those fans will also, always, have one railway out of the four which they absolutely will tear to shreds with facts and logic when given the opportunity. If you clicked on this video, chances are you've heard these before. The Southern Railway is about as original as modern Spongebob. The Great Western engines all look the same. The LNER is overrated. And the LMS, especially post Stanier, was boring. And whilst these claims have some layer of truth to them, I think we shouldn't let our preference of which trains you think are the best or the prettiest cloud our judgment of each railways in their own vacuum. That being said, definitely my least favourite of the big four is the Great Western Railway. As a result, I know very little about the Great Western, though I've never gone out of my way to stay ignorant about the company. I own a lot of books about the GWR, and whilst I cannot appreciate their practices and locomotives even after having read all those, they are still a force to be reckoned with. It's therefore such a shame that the train simulator route which harks back to the second golden age of the Western is a mixed bag of quality. The line is often referred to as the English Riviera line, so this Riviera better be absolutely beautiful. What in Drummond's name am I looking at? Are you serious? That is supposed to be the famous Dawa she wall. Never mind locos and carriages clipping through the platform. Never mind the waves looking like transparent JPEGs of Erebor. That is supposed to be this Riviera sea view this area is always praised for. I've never been to the West Country, but I'm pretty darn sure you can't see England wrapping around itself when you turn to face the channel. Ugly. Good thing Western locals are right and drive. And it's accentuated how poor this looks, because when you travel further south or land inwards, this scenery looks brilliant. The Western Lines of Scotland is my favourite UK steam era route, but that one has its visual flaws. The Woodhead Lines visuals are the closest to what I'd classify as perfect, despite being rather monotonous. But I didn't expect the English Riviera, an area renowned for its beauty, to have this big of a flaw. And when I checked on the other routes, I learned that this method of using what basically is a big puddle is the only way you can stimulate the sea in this game. So not only can I now never not notice that anymore, I'm stuck in a position where this, this is all you get. Sadly, this fluctuating quality is also reflected in the other major addition to route DLCs, the locomotives. With this route, you get four iconic GWR locomotives. And the Grange. 5700 pannier tanks, kings in either green or blue, castles in both GWR and BR livery, and certainly not least, the aforementioned Granges. And last and certainly least, the modified halls. Let's start at the top and work our way down. The castle steals the show, whether they be clean, whether they're even GWR variants. Though the best aspect of this locomotive is the exquisite inside valve gear. It is such a visible area that having that not animated would just be an outright ripoff. Having said that, none of the other engines that come with this route have animated valve gear. Actually, no, they don't have valve gear whatsoever. The King is a nice addition and adds some blue to the monotonous Brunswick of the other tender engines. Just, again, no valve gear whatsoever, the space between the frames is empty. The spindle rocker is animated, though don't you dare look too closely or you'll see it disappear into nowhere. Something I only realised while I was recording this video was the speedometer. Notice how the HUD says I'm doing 60 miles an hour, whilst the speedo indicates well over 100. These things are calibrated to kilometres rather than miles. <laughs> the Grange is a nice thing to see, I suppose. I know 80 of these things were built, but I keep forgetting they existed. They do make for an interesting change in quick drives and scenarios for that reason though. Sort of a, oh hey, you're here too moment. Again, no valve gear. The 5700 is a nice addition too, you simply cannot have a western route without a penny or tank rumbling around. I don't like this one as much, because I find it awkward to drive. It almost reminds me of a narrow gauge engine. The reverser only has three effective nodges, which, in practice, caps off your performance. My favourite implementation of a notch reverser is on the LNER J50. It's very responsive, gets you at a good speed, and best of all isn't a load of western a**s. But don't worry. 
The 5700 makes up for this. Bestie. Move over Caledonia works in your mediocre detail. These are the features the public want. On the subject of mediocre detail, ladies and gentlemen, the modified hall. Good grief, they, they didn't even try. Look at the textures, look at the modelling. Is this engine homeless or has it elevated above the need of a shed code? <gasps> AVGN, what are you doing here? Oh. Oh, you. <coughs> Probably the only saving grace these locals have is the sounds that they come with. Well, minus one aspect of the sounds. Talk about fluctuating quality. Other locals available for purchase which go along with these routes are... 1000 counties, 4200s, 5100s, 5101s, 5205s, 5400s, 5700s, 6100s, 6400s, 7400s, 7200s, 8100s, 8700s, Stars, Saints, S160s, Rebuild Patriots, and 8Fs. One take, one take. <laughs> Final thing I want to mention are the severe gradients on the southern end of the line. And now that I've mentioned those, let's wrap this up. Would I recommend this route? If you really want to accommodate some GWR steam in your train simulator experience, there's four alternatives to this route. There's the Falmouth branch, Memories of Mardi, the Malsbury branch, or the West Somerset Railway. I don't own the West Somerset, Falmouth, or Malsbury Railways, nor do I wish to. But I can't really recommend the Riviera line either. I can't look past the fact that you'll be confronted with this for the majority of your run. I got this route on sale for 11 euros, and considering you still get... 34 miles worth of main line, one highly detailed locomotive, three passable ones, and one mistake. Hawksworth carriages, collet carriages, chocolate and cream mark ones, again, and an assortment of GWR wagons for about a tenner, that seems about right. The normal price for this route is 20 bucks, and considering the low ends of the quality spectrum with this DLC, no, 20 is simply too much. But even for those 11 union coins I got this route for, you still end up at the same low ends, with really only one aspect, the castle class, to chalk up as a point in favour of purchasing the DLC. The only ahaha scenario where I can possibly recommend the Riviera line is if you already have the locomotives with many official or workshops ahaha scenarios for this route. But other than that, stay far away from this one. <laughs>